All right, say 14. The U.S. Preventative Services Task Force is recommending children as young as eight be screened for anxiety. This is regardless of whether a clinician has been made aware of any signs of symptoms. But health officials say the pandemic has taken a toll on children. That's not shocking at all. And now is the time to do something about it before things get worse for these kids. The question is what? So joining us now with some answers is Dr. George James. Thank you for being here. Good to see you again, doctor. I'm glad to be here. Okay, get him screened. This is, I've never heard of anything like this. Th this is new, right? It's new for children, but if you think about it, every time you go to the doctor, they're going to ask questions, right? Certain questions of how you're doing or how you're handling certain things. So screening is actually a part of lots of things at school, at the medical office, so it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. But why age eight? And if you're trying to look at all the different ages, why focus on age eight to do this? You know, I think they probably noticed that at age eight, uh, young children start to be able to show these symptoms and these signs, and they can articulate it. You know, at, uh, younger than that, you have to find other ways to connect with children to figure out what they're struggling with. But at age eight, probably from that point on, they can say what they're experiencing. You're right. An eight-year-old in 2022 isn't like an eight-year-old when I was eight, <laughs> eight years old, especially <laughs> eight-year-olds who've been going through this since they were about five and a half, six years of age the, during this pandemic. So give me some questions that I would ask my kid if I don't have the money to go to a therapist. Well, some of the questions you might want to ask your child is like, are they worried about anything? Or uh, even pay attention to what they're doing within their body. Ask them if they're, if, if they're hurting in their, in their heads or in their stomach. Uh, even want to think about uh, their sleeping habits. What might be going on with them? Are you feeling okay? Yeah. Uh, are you afraid of anything? These are good questions that you can ask your child or children. And just to show how prevalent this is, isn't like one in three uh, kids were reporting feeling something during the pandemic, like poor mental health? Yeah, if you think about it, that a lot of children were already struggling with mental health concerns even before. You know, some children might just lean to being some, somewhere on the anxious side. And so with the pandemic and crisis, more children are, have been experiencing this, and they're more willing to share and talk about it. So I think that's also part of why we see these higher numbers. So what do you do? If you see, if they say, yeah, I'm afraid, in fact, I'm even afraid to go to school. Yeah, actually, you know, that's been one of the things that lots of children have said. They've been afraid to go to school. They've been afraid to go to other places. You want to have the conversation. You want to be co to comfort them and support them. You want to be able to provide safety for them, to let them know it's okay. And then help them work through whatever those challenges are, to let them know that we'll figure a way out. It's going to be okay. And that's important. That is. So how would this work? Would this, it means we'd have to take everybody to a therapist, our children, or would we have to, you know, because it's hard to get a therapist and, you know, yeah. a little expensive. <laughs> but how would we get the screening if they want, if they're recommending everybody at age eight to have it? Well, yeah, I would love to say uh, everyone should go see a therapist. I mean, but that's not always possible. But I think there are multiple points of contact, right? When you go to your pediatrician, that might be one point. Well, at, at the school, uh, we were just discussing even the school nurse and also a therapist or a counselor that you might be able to engage. So there are multiple places where you might be able to interact with that you can do the screening. These kids aren't going to volunteer the fact that, well, maybe they, some would, but a lot of them aren't going to volunteer how they're feeling. They're not, but we got to press them. Well, you got to press them, but also what I realize about children is that they show you. They show you with their mood and their behavior. True. Right? So they'll start to be very different than what they were. And as you get older, their grades change or there are other things about them. You're like, something's different with you. And if you ask, they might be able to share. Mm. Maybe not as social as they were before the pandemic. Yeah. 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 And things that they used to do. But if you create a routine in your household, just like we might talk about physical activity, if you now start to talk about mental health or mental wellness, about how we can communicate with each other, talk to it them. becomes a normal thing yeah. in the family, and they now can share, hey, mom, dad, I feel X, Y, or Z. Is there anything like inexpensive therapy? professional therapy? Well, <clears throat> I'm a big advocate for use all the resources, all, all the tools, all, all the websites, the podcasts, everything, coaches, whatever you need to get that support. And so, you know, even where I work at Council for Relations, we have great resources on the website, but whatever you need to do, there are free resources before you might have to go to a paid resource. Okay. Doctor, thank right. you. Thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure.